you may be able to sort of go back on him here and then he can even crank his foot. Oh, oh he's he gonna can do it! Kiss his own butt. <laughs> Okay, people, welcome back to another Foolish Weekly. As always, I am Robo, and it's another week in toys. There's not a lot else to say this week. Nothing controversial, nothing I really want to address. It's just, here's pretty pictures of action figures, here's where you can pre-order them, go get them. So with that, we'll just start with some updates of stuff that we talked about last week, and even some stuff we missed, but there's... New, new stuff. There's always new stuff. What the hell am I talking about? Last week, the Tamashi Cinema site posted pictures of, well, at the time, upcoming, the Bandai SH Figuarts Avengers Infinity War Doctor Strange uh, Battle on Titan Edition. Sometimes there are just too many words strung together. But it wasn't until the comments that I realized they had either forgotten or taken away the magical sword that he was using in the debut pictures at whatever show that was. The figure went up for pre-order Monday, and sure enough... There's the sword, so <laughs> there was no need to worry about it. Because that's on top of the updated face print that makes the overall look more accurate than the first release of this figure, plus an old man snoozing in the chair head. And then of course the time stone effects, the crimson bands shooting out, and then the big orange effects for the palms and smaller orange effects for the arms themselves, which I think, oh man, that's worth the price of admission right there. It comes with enough cool stuff where you think, oh, Man, how am I going to display this thing? This week it'll be with the green, and this week it'll be with the orange, next week the red, or do I need multiples? No, no I don't. And then besides all that, they upgraded the hard candy shell cloak that the first figure came with to a more poseable, a more aesthetically pleasing wired cloth cape. This definitely feels like an upgrade here. This feels like, oh, we messed up on the first one, we're sorry, here's a bunch of stuff. Unlike, like, Scarlet Witch, who had a reissue, but just very subtle changes and a couple of magic effects that should have came with it in the first place. Strange's $83 ships in January of 2021. The Limb Toys Metal Gear Solid Snap. I mean, <laughs> this totally generic, not attached to any video game whatsoever, Ahab, was originally scheduled for late 2019, but because of uh, factory delays and global pandemics, and according to Limb Toys, the sheer amount of orders they got on this thing the release date was pushed and then pushed and then pushed. And then after a month or two of teasing, showing us package pictures and stuff, it finally seems that we're going to be getting our totally not snake. The S++ version is currently making its way to retailers. That'll be followed closely by the A++, then the B++, and then finally the Fulton Balloon Diorama should release at the first of next month. To make up for the delay, Limb Toys has included an extra pair of boots with added articulation, and then they upgraded the weapons. But on top of that, it seems they've also added spacers to adjust the height of the Ahab himself to where you can fit it into different displays. You know how different properties, different lines have different scales. They kind of jump around a bit. So he should be able to fit in wherever you want him to go. If you have it on pre-order, look for shipping notices soon. And if you don't have it on pre-order, I got mine at kghobby.com, I think. I've never had a problem with them at all. Oh, plunderlings. Yes, those rascally plunderlings recently sent out an update saying that production was in progress and it should be mid-October that the final figures are packaged and ready to ship to retailers or, well, the warehouse for distribution. There's even a tease of what that packaging will look like. But with shipping as it is right now with high rates and slow speeds, the actual shipping from the factory to where it needs to go has hit snags because they were originally going to airlift them, which takes about two weeks. The cost of that went from 5k to 30k, so it may be more prudent to just stick them on a boat, but that takes up to two months. There's no reason for the producers here to break the bank just to give us toys a couple of months earlier. Just stick them on the slow freighter and we'll wait. Or well, I'll wait. Speaking for myself, I can't speak for everybody. But it's a Kickstarter. At this point, that word is synonymous with, oh, well it's going to be a little bit later and it's gonna be a little bit later. Just because, you know, indie producers like this, it's sometimes their first foray into this kind of endeavor. So I tend to cut them a little slack. Plus, wouldn't that mean plunderlings for Christmas? Just think of those photo ideas. <laughs> yeah, I'm ready for them, but I, I can wait a little bit too. Brian Flynn over at Super 7 posted a couple of video updates this week. The first pertaining to some of the mistakes in their Thundercats. 
the ultimate wave one that is shipping right now it seems jackalman's shoulder neck overlay is missing some paint on the front along with the weapons being the wrong color and that same thing can be said for panthro's pants or his shorts i guess but in order to go ahead and get this wave into people's hands because it has been quite a wait they're going ahead shipping out wave one and then later on here in a couple months they're going to ship a package with the correct parts instructions on how to fix that and then an added bonus panthro head where he's got the glowy orange yellowy eyes from the call of the sword of omens so yeah that should be cool not making excuses for super seven but i can only guess with the current travel restrictions that they weren't able to travel back and forth to the factory in order to check things like this plus the wave already being late there was a rush and things were missed but at least there's an admission of guilt and an effort to make it right eh? In the other video, Brian took a look at the currently up for pre-order Disney Ultimate Wave 1. If you're interested in those, I suggest going over to Super 7's YouTube channel, giving it a watch, because I could stand here and ramble about them, but it's the same thing you could see from Brian himself. All I can say is they do look pretty good, and I cannot believe they're starting with Prince John. That's a crazy pick. Not stopping there, Super 7 also solicited their major wrestling podcast, Ultimates! Brian Myers and Matt Cardona. Now, if you don't know about the former Kurt Hawkins and Zack Ryder, they were WWE Tag Team Champions as recently as last year. And then this year, during the whole, you know, situation, they were let go. And then after a no-compete period, Matt showed up in AEW while Brian went to Impact. I hated to hear that they were released during this whole thing, but they seem to be doing well. I mean, in fact, they're probably better. They're gonna be fine. Each figure comes with appropriate accessories, including four heads apiece, but my favorite accessory is the tinier action figure that your action figure can play with while you play with that action figure. It's action figureception. The pre-orders for those are open for the next month. They'll be $45 a piece and they should release summer 2021. I almost hate to even mention the Bandai Warhammer 40K Primaris Space Marine Imperial Fist and Salamander because all I ever get is comments of heresy and you don't know what you're talking about and you said that wrong. Is it 40k or 40,000? Is it Primaris or Primaris or name? Is this the wrong size for the weapons or the armor or or this is out of scale or this has the wrong logo on it? I don't know. But I did say almost because you cannot fault a passionate fan base defending what they love. You know what I mean? Can you blame them, Star Wars fan who says that they have never put the proper accurate Stormtrooper helmet into plastic on any line, action figure, whatever, can you? Anyway, the two seem to reuse most of the Ultramarine that came out, was that earlier this year, last year? Time has no meaning. Which was apparently small, but turned out to be a nice action figure, especially to a heretic like me, who was just looking for a chunky suit of armor. The colors here are nice, and again, I know nothing about Warhammer, so I'm really fishing for things to say right now. Good news compared to that original release though, which sold out super quick, these will go up for pre-order September 12th, stay open for a week, and then Bandai will make these made to order. If whatever orders are made, that's what they'll produce. Keep an eye out on the Warhammer Facebook and Twitter pages, and I'll probably bring it back up because I'm a glutton for punishment when the sale goes up. Oh, Mortal Kombat 2? Come on. Todd McFarlane recently posted an update video for the Kickstarter spawn, showing the cape in all its hingy glory. But if you stop the video in just the right spot, you'll see a little tease for the Mortal Kombat Shao Kahn. Now, I don't keep up with the releases here because it's not a line I collect or know anything about the actual property itself, but I don't think they've shown Shao Kahn yet. But if you're a fan of the line, you have that to look forward to. Rolling on with McFarlane though, just this morning, Amazon put up for pre-order the DC Multiverse 2-pack of Flash and Batman Earth Negative 52, or Red Death if you're not trying to market your whole line as Batman. And both of these look fantastic, Red Death, completely unique sculpt. Flash does reuse the body from the single release, but you, at least you get like an angry head, a determined head. Unfortunately, he has the holes for the electric effects that come with the single release, but those aren't included here. Instead, we get a rock base of some kind. $40 should release at the end of October. Some news I did miss last week was McFarlane's, what's it called, Platinum Edition line that seems to be just the standard figures, but in a bronze finish. Joker was revealed and they even sent out a sample and looking at it i like it but it is just basically the standard joker 
in bronze. There's nothing different about the packaging, the labeling. Okay, the time stamp is different, of course, but other than that, same sculpt, just looks like a statue. These are limited to 3,000 pieces to, and I quote, bring the chase of collecting back to fans everywhere. That's probably not the best marketing ploy during a pandemic, but at least it's just uh, the figure in bronze. Yeah, statue looking version of the regular figure. Unless you need a Joker statue for a Batcave diorama or a park in Gotham, something like that. And then the announcement on McFarlane's website did tease a Batman in the same style. I have heard of people already finding these out in the, in the wild, so if you're interested, the chase is on. But last week I did talk about McFarlane's Walmart exclusive gold label collection, Todd designed Batman. So based on that, I thought this will be a DC multiverse offshoot line, but it's not. Apparently it's a catch all for variants from different properties. Earlier in the week, a seven inch Witcher 3 Geralt was revealed to be in this line with a yellow dyed armor. And then that was quickly followed by a video showing off a fully articulated Mandarin spawn for the line. Hey, Philip, look, they updated it. You gotta get more Mandarin spawns now. The blue version will be part of this gold label line, but there's also a red version that has the opposite big spiky shoulder pad, a different weapon, different face. So maybe that'll be a general release because we all know how everybody loves Walmart exclusives. Pre-orders will hit in October. Something we saw back at Toy Fair, but a lot of people have been asking about is the McFarlane Fortnite line. And this week we got full on solicitation pictures for Big Mouth and Lava Wing. We knew the Lava Wing would just be a repaint of the Frost Wing, but seeing pictures again, Oh man, I had forgotten how good this thing looks. Like it's actually hot to the touch. Oh, you know, like lava. And then Big Mouth is exactly what I personally like to see in this line. A big beastie type character that doesn't look out of place or scale when I shove it into my 112th collection. Or if you do seven inch, this is right up your alley. I've said many, 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 many times that the beauty of the Fortnite lines is that the designs are so good and so wacky that you can slip them into other properties without much trouble. and the same can be said for these two. It also helps that Fortnite is currently running a Marvel campaign and they've gone as far as Fortnite characters showing up in Marvel comics. You know what that means, right? Peely and Beef Boss are now Marvel characters, or at least recognized in the Marvel universe. Like I needed more of an excuse to buy Fortnite figures. And now it seems Jax is gonna jump in on that same kind of action with their six inch scaled Apex Legends. I know as much about Apex Legends as I do Mortal Kombat and Fortnite and Warhammer, which is to say mostly nothing at all, but some of these designs catch my eye. Like Wraith could probably be fudged into the background of my G.I. Joe or Marvel Legends shelf, while Pathfinder is, well, it could be just a generic droid on any of my shelves. But Bloodhound, I may have to get a couple of these to finally give Infos Nest some crew members on my Star Wars display. But just from the promotional pictures, I'm already picking out some nitpicks, like this picture showing the lack of an ankle tilt whatsoever. I mean, the hinge is there for forward and back. It doesn't seem to rock. Pathfinder will likely be a pain in the ass to stand, being so top heavy and then spindly little legs. Bloodhound may have a ball joint at the waist, but I don't think the same can be said for Wraith. So articulation is inconsistent. I mean, Yes, it has toes, and it looks like some deep double joints at the knees and elbows, but without rocker ankles, without a good base for the figure to stand, mm -hmm. either way, they look interesting, and to a non-gamer like me, there's possibilities here. $20 a piece, and while Amazon has listings that haven't went up for pre-order yet, Big Bad Toy Store does say these come out Q2 of 2021. Just today, NECA is continuing their trek back to the light side and into the good graces of a lot of disgruntled collectors. They're offering another round of pre-orders for the next week on the NECA store, but this time around, it's not figures that we missed on Target or Walmart or a pre-order window of 30 seconds. These are new items, kinda. Mostly, yeah. There's the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles cartoon version of their street diorama we've seen several times before, but this is more animated inspired. But they've added some extra flavor with a fire hydrant, a manhole cover, a billboard, a tower, and then up top you can either make it daytime or nighttime. But more up my alley is an accessory pack that spruces up the 1990 movie Turtles. There's a half-eaten pizza in a box, a skateboard, chips, pork rind? Pork rind. Newspaper, street sign, straw hat, manhole cover, mutagen tube, stuffed panda bear, spinning nunchuck hand, trash shredder helmet, and then even an officially branded bottle of turtle wax. Then there's the first officially licensed use of April's likeness on the TV, 
alternate turtle heads that do come even though it's not pictured with the new ties that hang down over the shoulders in the Walmart sets and then a set of baby turtles in the seven inch scale. So some things we saw with the quarter scale stuff shrunk down now we can use it with the seven inch displays. I wonder if Donatello has that extra human mouth in the back of his throat. Whoa. In the world of Hasbro Transformers R.E.D., aka those damn non-transforming Transformers, aka the best Transformers in the world, unfortunately we have to wait a bit longer with the Walmart pre-orders being pushed back to October. It's already been pushed once or twice, and the timeline was always a bit unrealistic, given that we only saw the prototypes a couple of months ago. Then again, they've already shown up in Calgary, Canada, so what the hell do I know? And we've seen rumors of future figures in this line, but I like to see actual proof or names on websites and that came this week with a landing page on walmart.com for the R.E.D. Starscream. There may be others and I've heard other names but this is the one that jumped out at me. And with Megatron Soundwave and Starscream that's a hell of a start to the Decepticons. If this line fails for whatever reason and <laughs> we only end up with these three and then Optimus Prime and hopefully Bumblebee and maybe Ironhide that, that's a cool little display. Yeah. Hopefully we'll see the full reveal of Starscream and probably others at the end of this month. More on that in a minute. For the Hasbro Star Wars Black series, some past store exclusives have popped up for pre-order on the usual online sites like, you know, Dorkside Toys. Commander Wolf, Commander Gree, General Grievous, Gamorrean Guard. There's a lot of G's right there, isn't there? They're all for the taking. No running to stores, no quick online sellouts, just pre-order, click, wait. You know, the way nature intended. Maybe the same will eventually happen for this week's fully revealed Target exclusive Galaxy's Edge Mountain Trooper, and then the yet to be announced but heavily rumored Target exclusive Galaxy's Edge Commander Pyre was found out in the wild too this week. So maybe they'll go for general order someday in the future. You know, like the Target exclusive G.I. Joe Cobra Island wave. We don't have any G.I. Joe news this week, so I thought I'd just throw that out there, just so I could say... G.I. Joe. This week we saw the first Monday of the month. <laughs> okay, not really, but damn close. Hasbro still took the opportunity to make it a Marvel Monday and reveal the fan channel exclusive Marvel Legends Retro Doctor Doom. This is essentially the same Doom figure we got earlier in the year, but with a cloth piece wedged between the cape and the body and then brighter colors for the tunic and belt. They also skipped on painting the clasps for the armor for some reason, I guess to make them less apparent. And at first glance, it looks like an odd choice, especially with that cloth piece, but Hasbro is giving us options. You can take the cape off and have that super classic look before he had the cape, or take the cloth out, put the cape, put the head back on, and just have a normal classic look for Doctor Doom, because I do like the two-tone greens here. It also comes with some magic effects for the arms, two spell books, alternate hands, the ultimate nullifier, and blast effects for the jet thrusters on the back. It also seems there's a gun in the holster, so another accessory. If nothing else, you can look at this as an accessory pack for the previous Doom, mix and match parts, and then you have a Doombot to go with that Doctor Doom. But again, that's the point of the fan channel releases. They're just easy repaints, easy re-releases, slight changes for people who may want it, but it's not absolutely necessary to get for the main line. $22 should show up in November, but given how the year has been already, it may show up tomorrow. Marvel Legends. Woo! Hasbro's killing us. Speaking of killing us, Hasbro this week announced that they will be holding PulseCon September 25th and 26th. All the brands we love are included in the announcement, and even though we've been getting live streams fairly frequently over the past couple of months, this is probably the big blowout that everybody was waiting for during San Diego Comic-Con at home. Like I said back then, you knew Hasbro was going to come out swinging during a time where they could be the focus of the toy world. San Diego Comic-Con at home had a lot of nice reveals from different companies, but Hasbro couldn't be the center of attention. And it only makes sense. We saw toys then, we'll see toys now, we'll see toys at the end of the month. It's just <laughs> crazy. Transformers, G.I. Joe, Power Rangers, Ghostbusters, Star Wars, Marvel, it should be an exciting weekend. Unless all the reveals get spoiled the week before, the day before, and then the weekend is just full of comments. Uh, that's not new. We knew about that. Hasbro sucks. <sighs> I'm also guessing this will be about the time that the Pulse exclusives like uh, the Hellfire Club and the Star Wars Heroes of Endor sets will go up for pre-order. So, the excitement of new reveals mixed with the stress of just constantly clicking trying to get your toys. I changed my mind. I'm scared of the end of the month. And that's it for this week. 
as far as I know. There's probably more stuff, but we'll catch that next week if I did miss it. And touching back on the reveals being spoiled, Hasbro is a company, and the teams from each department are excited to show you stuff. So when stuff does leak out from retailers or wherever leaks may happen, they can't really just stop and go, oh, well, you knew about this. Here's more stuff from 2024. They have a schedule. They're gonna show you this. It's gonna go for pre-order. It's gonna come out. They're gonna show you more stuff. Yeah, just because it gets spoiled doesn't mean the excitement should go away. I mean, Hasbro officially showing it to us is still exciting. It's not their fault. So there is no purpose for getting on the live streams or in the comment section, Instagram, Facebook, social media, and just telling them how much they suck because they're not showing you new stuff that somebody else spoiled for you. And it's not just Hasbro, it's other companies too. All they're trying to do, well, one, they're making money. It's a company, that, there's no way around that. But two, some of these guys are just as passionate as us and it breaks their hearts when the excitement dies down because of spoilers. We're getting the same toys at the same speed. Just because you know about it a day earlier doesn't matter. I'm sorry if that pisses anybody off, but if you enjoyed this weekly, comment, like, subscribe. Much, much love to the plus if you're interested in seeing videos early or just in a position to help out the channel, patreon.com. But wherever you may be watching this, I'll always catch you on foosh. Last time I'm gonna talk about this, the 100,000 subscriber thing, I got my plaque in. I just wanted to say thank you to everybody that supported me, gave me advice through the years, friends I've made, comments, responses, back and forth, just everybody. I, I really, really appreciate it. This is crazy. Something I never thought would happen until I saw the number, and now it's even more real that I have something to hang on the wall. <laughs> Who knew?